Lindsay Huey did not let a season-ending knee injury in her first season at Portland deter her from becoming a four-year starter and a vital part of the Pilots' 2002 and 2005 NCAA National Championship teams. The 2002 WCC Freshman of the Year and four-year first-team All-West Coast Conference selection was noted for both her versatility and intensity. A midfielder with a nose for the ball, she is second all-time in assists, eighth in points, and ninth in game-winning goals. A signature moment as a pilot for Lindsay came in the 19th minute of the 2005 quarterfinals at Merlot Field as she calmly took a cross from Megan Rapino and drilled a shot past the Notre Dame keeper for a 2-0 Portland lead as the Pilots prevailed 3-1. Lindsay was selected to the 2005 NCAA All-Tournament team and the College Cup in College Station, Texas as the Pilots disposed of Penn State and UCLA to take home their second NCAA championship trophy. Her notable pilot career includes being named to the National Soccer Coaches Association of America First Team All-West Region from 2002 through 2005 and an NSCAA All-American in each of those seasons. A superb playmaker, she is third on the pilot's all-time list for most assists in a single season and she was selected as pilot's MVP in 2003 and 2004. In the classroom, Lindsay was a WCC All-Academic Team selection in 2003, 2004, and 2005, and a first-team NSCAA Scholar All-American in 2005. A member of the U.S. Soccer's U18 and U21 national teams, she helped the U21s win the Nordic Cup in 2003 and 2004, and in March 2005, she traveled to Portugal as a member of the U.S. national team that defeated France, Finland, Denmark, and Germany to win the Algarve Cup. Lindsay, who grew up in Mission Viejo, continues to be a coaching fixture in youth soccer programs in Southern California and even returned to active player status in 2019 with the LA Galaxy OC of the United Women's Soccer League. Please welcome to the podium UP Athletic Hall of Famer, Lindsay Huey. Congratulations. Thank you. How, how did you end up at UP? What's your recruiting story? Well, um, it's a little different. I think the rules have all changed now, so you can't talk to student athletes until a little bit later. But um, I had my club coach kind of steer the way for me because I, at the time, didn't have a mom who really understood or knew soccer very well. So it was the day that you could just speak to a coach. And my mom came home and said, you know, hey, how did it go? And I'm like, it went great, I committed. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I committed. To where? I'm like, to the University of Portland. And she's like, like, that's where you're gonna go. And I said, yeah, that's where I'm gonna go. You're sure? I said, I'm totally sure. I think, um, I, and I'd never seen the school. Never been up here, never seen the school, none of that. I had my club coach, you know, pick apart some of the pieces that I knew were going to be important to me. So I knew academically I needed to be at a smaller school where if I decided maybe I didn't feel like going to a class, I'd be held accountable for that. Um, I knew I struggled academically. I was going to need more time. So I wanted to come to a school where I could get that. Um, but I think when we're talking about all the athletics and stuff, I never really looked at like, oh, they won championships or any of those things. It, it certainly helped that there was a Michelle French and a Shannon McMillan and a Tiffany Milbritt. Um, but I think more than anything, I kept hearing this thread of you're going to be a better person. And I think as I sit and I listen to everybody talk about their experiences, that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about learning life lessons. And when you sit with Clive and you sit with Clarina, you sit with Big and you just get that feel of like, oh my gosh, I'm a whole person. They're not talking about stats. They're not talking about what can you promise us that you're going to do. They're talking about what they can promise to give you, and that was to be a better person. And maybe I was a little bit rotten, you know, growing up, and I knew I needed that. So it was an easy decision for me to come here, and uh, I never regretted my decision. I've always felt like this was exactly where I needed to be, exactly when I needed to be here. Not many people can say they've won two national championships. Uh, you know, those two experiences, what was that like, just being a part of those two teams, you know, three years apart? Uh, how were they different, and what do you remember from those experiences? 
Well, they were, they were really different. 2002 was a team that had um, a lot of, it, it was a mix of players. Boogie was on that team, Emily was on that team. There's a lot of different players, and uh, I think Clive's ability to bring in players and get them on the same page right away um, is an incredible tool that not very many coaches can do. Um, and so I felt like that year we weren't the like, oh, this is gonna be the number one team. In fact, I don't think anybody thought anything about us. <laughs> I don't even think we were on the radar. Um, but we did all of the main principles that Clive taught, and because of that, we were just a force to be reckoned with. You know, we had a chip on our shoulder, and we came out, and we went after it. Um, and we had players who played through a lot of adversities. Lauren Rossi got hit in the eye, and we had a walk-on keeper um, in the finals. I, it was scary. Um, and I remember our back line getting together and being like, not one single player on their team could take a shot. And everybody committed to that goal um, because we were family, right? And so, like, you would never let somebody to go down, you know, and, and take a hit without you being there to back them up. Um, so that team was, it, it was gritty. And then you had 2005, I mean, I don't even know what to say about 2005. You had Christine Sinclair and Angie Wozniak and Steph Lopez, and that was a team... Um, maybe one of two, I think, in history that's ever gone undefeated an entire season from start to finish. And every game I just kept thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be the game where we learn that lesson. And it just never really came. I think we learned various lessons throughout the journey, but um, that season was one, I mean, you can't compare that season to any other. Like so many former UP soccer players, you've gone on to kind of give back to the soccer and youth community. Talk about why that was important to you and when you decided to go that route. I would think a majority of us stay coaching because of the impact that Clive had on us as players. Um, you know, I remember a time, it was Thanksgiving, I think. We'd all gone out to a restaurant. I didn't realize when you come into college athletics that you're not going to go home for breaks. So I'm like, yes, it's Thanksgiving, like, we're all going home. And he's like, we're going to this restaurant, we're going to eat together. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a bummer. And so we went to a restaurant for Thanksgiving, which is weird. In my family, you'd never do that. Um, and so the meal is going to end, and Clive's like, you know, everybody's going to pick up after themselves. And I'm like, huh? Hmm? They're going to bust this after, you know? They're going to bust this. And he's like, no, everybody's going to clean up after themselves because it's not their job to do that. It's your job to help out. And I think what he was really saying is it's your job to help out all the time, anytime available, always, right? And so um, my kids think it's weird. We go out to eat, and I'm like, what are you doing? You clean up after yourself. And I do that with my teams, and I do that with you know, any environment I'm in because it, it just meant so much to me that he was instilling these life lessons. I never thought about the championships. I never thought about, you know, um, beating Santa Clara in those last nine months. Maybe, maybe I thought about it a little bit. Maybe I thought about it a little bit. But I remembered more of the life lessons. Um, and so because of that, it's so important for me to be able to continue to pay that forward in the way that I felt like he was able to do that for me. Any final thoughts, acknowledgments, or stories that you'd like to share? There is one. It was a lesson about early is on time is late, early is on time. Boogie's going to kill me for this. But I remember, I had no idea that she would even be here tonight, and I'd already thought about this. Um, I think I was a freshman. We had gone to, I want to say it was Texas, and Clive says, everybody's going to get in partners and make sure that your partner's on the bus before we leave. And so everybody pairs up and is everybody here? Everybody's here. So we leave and we make it to the field. And all of a sudden a taxi rolls up to the field. And I'm like, and Saki jumps out. And I'm like, why is Saki coming out of the taxi? And she's like, Boogie, I told you I was in the bathroom. <laughs> and I learned two things that day. Not to partner with Boogie. <laughs> and to be super, super, super early. So when I saw that the, you know, dinner was tonight 
at 6 o'clock. I was like, I'm getting on that flight at 6 a.m. I'm going to make dang sure that we are on time. And that's just how I roll with my family, with my teams and everything. Because Clive always said, you don't arrive on time. On time is late. Early is on time. And that's meant a lot to me. Same thing with like tucking in your jerseys. You know, it's like my team will fight me tooth and nail on the tucking in of the jerseys. But for Clive, he felt like that was such a professional thing to do. It was a sign of respect, right, to your opponent, like to look a certain way. And same thing with time, right? It's respecting other people's time. People are expecting you to be there at a certain time, so you respect that time. So I thought about that. I'm sure, did you, do you remember that story? <laughs> I asked Saki, she remembers a little portion of it. <laughs> I mean, I could go on and on with stories like that, but I really do think that, you know, as we all sit up here, and I'm, and I'm honored to be, you know, up here, we're really not talking about what we walked away with in terms of wins um, or, or how historical things were, but we're really just talking about learning how to be better people. I did go in, come out of retirement after 15 years, four kids in tote, two of which are sleeping. One's like half awake. Um, and the other one's fully knocked out. I mean, poor kid. <laughs> I feel for her. Um, but to the two that are awake, better Christmas presents for you guys. Good job. <laughs> Way to hang in there. Um, I came out of retirement, and I really did that to show my girls that you can do anything you want in this world if you work hard and you stay persistent. You can do anything you want, right? I hadn't touched a ball at all in 15 years. So I came out of retirement, I played for the LA Galaxy OC, and I started very unexpectedly. And I had this wonderful and super positive experience. And the reason why it was so important for me to come out of retirement is because I knew I could have and should have been a better teammate while I was playing, and I wasn't. And so I needed that opportunity to come back and be the player that I knew that I could have been if I'd had a little bit more time to mature. And so I came back with the intention not to win games or, or to try and make, you know, another professional team or travel or do all that, though it would be nice. Um, I just did that with the intention to be a better person, be a better teammate. Um, and so I did that. And, and we wound up winning. And then uh, three months later, I had a heart attack unexpectedly on the soccer field. I know everybody's like, what? Um, and so eight little eyes were watching my every move after that. And I felt like it was important to show my kids yet again that we cannot run from things that we fear. We have to face them head on. And so I became the uh, ambassador to the American Heart Association right after that heart attack. And my kids have seen me just go toe to toe over and over again facing adversities. And that's exactly what Clive would have told each and every one of us is you never run from your adversity. You face it head on. You take it step by step. Um, and I'm so grateful and thankful to have been here because I don't know what kind of person I would have been had I not come to UP and been absorbed by this entire family. Well, Lindsay, that, that's amazing, amazing stories. And well-deserved that you are now officially in the Athletics Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you.